All right, you ready for this? Let's look at an example of a linear system which is coupled. So going back to my original template, I can have any old linear combination of x and y in the definitions of x dot and y dot. This time I'm going to take x dot equals x plus y and y dot equals 4x minus 2y. So again, this is not an uncoupled system, this is a coupled system where y is involved in the definition of x dot and x is involved in the definition of y dot. These two equations are interacting with one another. Now, uh, I can write this in matrix form just as kind of a notational reminder just like this and I get this matrix 1, 1, 4, minus 2. This matrix is going to be the key that unlocks the understanding of this equation. I cannot just solve these things individually like I did in earlier examples in order to write down what the face portrait looks like or understand the solutions. These things are coupled together. This is a totally new phenomenon. So let me just show you what the face portrait looks like and kind of point at the different ingredients and then we'll take a theoretical viewpoint to try to understand where that comes from. So here's what the face portrait looks like. You'll notice that the origin looks like a saddle, right? It looks like that last example with A equals 1. It looks like a saddle, except this time the straight line solutions are not along the coordinate axes. They're at some other angles here. But in essence, the straight line solutions still form that skeleton. There's this skeleton here, and I can build up a, a qualitative picture of the solutions around that skeleton. Now, where does that skeleton come from? The skeleton comes from an analysis of this matrix. These directions are the directions of the eigenvectors. These are eigenspaces right here. These are the directions of the eigenvectors. Here's one eigenvector direction, this one right here, and another eigenvector direction. Now how do I know what's growing or shrinking along which straight line solution or along which axis, etc.? Well, the eigenvalues for those eigenvectors tell me whether I'm coming toward the origin or going away from the origin. And they also tell me how fast. So for example, in this solution, as we'll see, uh, I, I am shrinking more quickly. I have a strong exponential decay here and a slower exponential growth out here. And again, I learned that from the eigenvalues of this matrix. Okay, so the way to unlock the solution to a linear system like this is to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this guy, and then I can get a qualitative picture, and I can also write down explicit solutions. I would like to show you how we do that. Let's do a little theory. So I'm going to call this the search for straight line solutions. Remember that the idea is that I would like to use these straight line solutions and the growth or decay along these straight line solutions in the phase plane to be the skeleton that gives me the qualitative picture. Those are going to be kind of the fundamental behaviors and then everything else is going to can be sort of drawn around those things. So I'm going to start out with this generic equation x dot equals ax. I can think of this like a 2D linear system. It actually could be a, any a higher dimensional linear system. That's okay, but we're going to focus on 2D. So it's x dot equals ax. I would like to find a straight line solution. And so what I'm going to do is hypothesize what one would look like. I've seen exponential decay or growth along straight line solutions before already and you know in these previous examples. So let's let's suppose that I'm looking for a solution that has the form x of t equals e to the lambda t times b. Here, uh, that means that I'm just looking for something which exponentially decays or grows along a constant direction v. So lambda is some constant and v is some constant vector. Okay. Now there's a lot of math that's going to happen right here, just a couple of lines. So let you know, absorb this. Think about it carefully. There's a lot of lot of good stuff right here, just a small computation. I have this hypothesis. I have this form that I think the straight line solution is going to have. Let's plug it in and see what happens in the equation. What sort of relations I get by saying that this thing needs to solve this equation? Okay, plug it in. Well, what's x dot? I have to differentiate this expression. It might be a little funny because there's a vector in here and stuff, but it's the same old kind of calculus derivative we've, we've been doing. I've got x dot, that's the derivative of e to the lambda t times v. The v is a constant vector, so I just differentiate the e to the lambda t and I just get a lambda that comes down in front. So the derivative of that with respect to t is just e, uh, lambda times e to the lambda t times v. Okay, what's on the right hand side? Well, that's just ax. That's a times e to the lambda t v. This guy is a scalar, it's just a, it's just a number, and so it can come out of the whole product, so I have e to the lambda t times a v. Okay, great. So I've evaluated both sides of this, this equation, 
for the hypothesized form of a straight line solution. Let's see what happens. I'm going to equate the two sides. Okay, so I know that lambda e to lambda t v is equal to e to the lambda t a v. That means these two guys are equal. Now e to the lambda t is never zero, so I can cancel it off of both sides. And I end up with an equation which looks like lambda v equals a v. Or if I write it this way, it's a v equals lambda v. This hopefully looks a little bit familiar. This is the equation for an eigenvalue or, and an eigenvector. So an, if I'm given a matrix A, an eigenvector and an eigenvalue are solutions to this equation. If I can find a V and a lambda for which this is true, I have found an eigenvector V and an eigenvalue lambda for that eigenvector V. That's a really amazing thing because that's like a big idea in linear algebra. And what we've done is quickly connected the idea of a straight line solution with a very big idea in linear algebra, which is the idea of an eigenvector and an eigenvalue. OK, so what's our conclusion? A v must equal lambda v and must have an eigenvector and an eigenvalue if x, this hypothesized form of x, is going to solve our differential equation. So v must be an eigenvector and lambda must be an eigenvalue for a. So if we're going to try to find straight line solutions, we need to take a and we need to go hunting for eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Those will give us our straight line solutions, which will then kind of unlock the behavior of the whole thing, both explicit solution formulas and the qualitative picture through the phase plane. OK, let's come back to this example originally that we had discussed, which is x dot is x plus y, and y dot is 4x minus 2y. Now, remember, we didn't know how to do anything with this before, but now we know that the straight line solutions can be kind of the idea that will help us get at this, the, this, the whole picture of this equation. And I can get at these straight line solutions by finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this matrix. So I'm going to quickly and sort of tersely walk you through finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this matrix and then obtain the straight line solutions for this system. So first of all, remember the eigenvalues. These are constants. These are these lambdas. And these are the lambdas that appear in the equation a v equals lambda v. And in order to have such a lambda, in order for such a lambda to exist, there has to be something in the kernel of this matrix, a minus lambda i, where i is the identity matrix. Otherwise, it will, I would not be able to find any such v's except for the zero vector v. So I have to look for lambdas where this is a singular matrix. In other words, there's something non-zero in its null space or in its kernel. So I'm going to look for lambdas for which the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. I'm going to go through this whole computation. Determinant of a minus lambda i. Let's just write that all out for this particular matrix A. 1 minus lambda 1, V minus 2 minus lambda. Uh, sorry, V4. I meant 4. OK, great. Let's take the determinant of this matrix. So take that sort of cross multiply thing to find the determinant. I get this product, multiply it all out, and I get this nice polynomial, lambda squared plus lambda minus 6 equals 0. I find two roots, lambda 1 equals minus 3, and lambda 2 equals 2. These are exactly the eigenvalues for this matrix. These are the only constants lambda for which I'll be able to find non-zero v's that make a v equal to lambda v. Great. Now that I've got these, I have to take one at a time, and I have to find the v's. So let's start with lambda 1 equals minus 3. I'm going to find the eigenvectors. I'm going to plug in lambda 1 equals minus 3 into that eigenvector, the, you know, the, or sorry, the eigenvalue equation that I needed to, to, to solve. So I have a minus lambda, lambda 1 i. Plugging in lambda 1 equals minus 3, I get 4, 1, 4, 1. Now, if you look at this for a moment, it's pretty clear that this is a singular matrix. This is something that has a non-zero vector in its kernel. And I just need to find 1, and that will represent this, this family of eigenvectors here. So I choose v1 equals 1 minus 4. That's an eigenvector. In other words, 4, 1, 4, 1 times 1 minus 4, that gives me 0, 0. That's a non-zero vector in the kernel of this matrix. So the pair, lambda 1 equals minus 3, and v1 is 1 minus 4 is an eigenvalue and eigenvector pair. Great, let's do the other one. a minus lambda 2i. That's minus 1, 1, 4, minus 4. And uh, stare at it for a minute, and you see that, for example, this vector 1, 1 will be in the kernel of this matrix. So I found another eigenvector. And this time, this eigenvector pairs up with lambda 2. So the pair lambda 2 equals 2, and v2 is 1, 1. That's an eigenvalue eigenvector pair, again, for this matrix A. Now I've got all the ingredients I need to find the straight line solutions. I just plug everything in. x1 is e to the minus 3t times 1 minus 4. That's e to the lambda 1t times v1. And x2 is e to the 2t times 1, 1. That's e to the lambda 2t times v2. 
That's it, I've got two straight line solutions. I now have got basically everything I need to both produce explicit solutions to the equation and to draw the, the uh, phase plane. All right, we're almost at the end of this example. Let's start now where we left off. We have this system. We have some straight line solutions that we have found using eigenvector and eigenvalue pairs. Now, can we draw ourselves, for example, a phase plane? Let's just try to draw one just with this much information. So I've already drawn the whole thing, but let's pick it apart one piece at a time. For example, start with this first with this x1, which is this straight line solution here. This is a guy that moves along the direction of the vector 1 minus 4, and it decays toward the origin. So I've drawn it here in this slightly crooked line. This is supposed to be a straight line, but I've drawn it here. It's in the 1 minus 4 direction. It, run, it runs over 1 and falls 4. It's in the 1 minus 4 direction, and it decays toward the origin right there. The other straight line solution is this guy, e to, the, e to the 2t times 1, 1. This is in the 1, 1 direction, and it grows away from the origin exponentially. So these two little guys basically represent the images of these two solutions. But now, wait a second. There's, of course, there's a whole bunch more solutions. Where do they come from? Well, um, first thing to notice is that I didn't have to choose this 1 minus 4. I could have chosen any multiple of this 1 minus 4 for my eigenvector. And that means that I could have gotten, for example, negative 1, 4. That would have been fine. Or, you know, negative 2, 8 or something. And that would represent the straight line solution on this side of the origin. Okay, so I could have gotten essentially anything over here or anything over here by just multiplying this by, by something. Could, you know, a negative number would put me over here, another number would just put me farther out as for my starting point when t is 0. Okay, great. Well, that's that's just an illustration of a much bigger idea or a big fact that I've written here and that big fact is that I've got a linear equation so that means that linear combinations of solutions make more solutions okay that's what it means to be linear here I can take linear combinations of solutions get new solutions so I've got two solutions that gives me an infinite family of solutions by taking linear combinations of these two so in fact if I take c1 for any constant c1 times x1 plus c2 for any constant c2 times x2 that gives me a new solution to this system if i write it all out well that's equal to this c1 e to minus 3t blah 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 um, this is a whole big giant two parameter family of solutions and guess what pick a c1 and a c2 and you get something in this phase plane you get one of these guys I don't need to know this formula in order to fill in the rest of this picture up here though because once I have these straight line solutions I can sort of guess that if I'm over here well one of these I'm gonna follow one solution this guy is kinda gonna decay down and then as soon as this as soon as I get small in this direction this this one is gonna start to grow up here and you can kinda make that same argument in any of these situations to see that this is a saddle point and I have this sort of saddle-like behavior moving around these straight line solutions. This idea of finding straight line solutions, having a formula which says take any linear combination to get, to get all of your solutions to your linear system, and being able to use the straight line solutions to sort of sketch out the skeleton around which we, we can draw the rest of the behavior, this is a really, really useful viewpoint that will allow us to understand and solve most of the linear systems we're going to encounter.